What's going on guys? Welcome back. I'm Brandon with SwoleDaddyDetroit.com and today is one of my favorite days. It doesn't come along very often, but it is new bike day and on today's episode we're going to be doing a complete review of my new gravity bike that came from BikesDirect.com, so stay tuned. All right, guys, so this bike is gonna be the new, well, 2022. Um, let, let me take a look actually at the side here. This is the Gravity FSX Boost Comp Eagle 29er, and I got it in a 19 inch uh, large size frame. It's the silver color, so we'll get it unboxed, we'll have a look at it. But basically, I've been riding uh, an older Gravity, uh, I think a 2014 model, uh, well, sorry, not Gravity, but uh, it's still a Bikes Direct bike, but this was their, back when it was called SE Bikes, they had a model called the Fat Bike, which was a 26 by 4 inch uh, fat tire bike. I've been rocking that now for almost a year, um, almost solo, as, as my entire bike that I ride in the wintertime, I ride in the summertime, and uh, it's, been, it's been great, it works really well, it's really pretty fast bike for being a heavy fat tire bike, no suspension, uh, but... I wanted to kind of go to the next level again. I used to have a full suspension, uh, really older, early 2000s uh, bike. I think it was an old Diamondback, but I wanted to get something more modern. I wanted to have lockouts front and rear, full suspension. I wanted a one by 12 drivetrain or one by 11, all those kind of cool things. So the gravity ended up taking the cake on that. And from a price point, uh, it made a lot of sense. This, this is like $14.99. Uh, 1500 bucks plus tax so you're a little under 1600 bucks uh, at least here in Michigan with six percent sales tax now the problem with bikes direct has been that with COVID with all the bike shortages it's actually been pretty tough to get bikes that are actually in stock so once I got an email that this bike came back in stock uh, it was a no-brainer boom made the uh, order bike got shipped here in like three days uh, so super stoked. Actually, it came too quick where I wasn't even ready to put it together. So, uh, so also during the meantime, while as soon as I ordered the bike, I actually already already uh, ordered some pedals, uh, seat, some grips, and uh, some fenders and stuff. So we're already going to be modifying it as soon as we get this thing apart. So let's quit talking. Let's go ahead and get to it. I'll rip this thing open and we'll get started building. So if you guys haven't ordered from Bikes Direct before, uh, I've ordered two or three bikes from them over the years and they always come, they're about 80, well, probably even 90% assembled. Um, and usually I've never had an issue with shipping. They always come well packaged. I've never had to, you know, refuse a delivery because of any issues. Um, so yeah, again, you know, you kind of got the wheels. We're going to put on the handlebars, the pedals, um, usually pretty simple stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and pop it out. We'll go from there. Now, one tip uh, that I did read on the Bikes Direct website, and I've never had an issue, but if I did, uh, you definitely want to keep your original box. So if you end up taking this box and, you know, you throw it to the curb, throw it away, and you end up uh, deciding a few days later that you want to return your bike, they actually charge you an extra fee. I don't know, 100 bucks or 150 bucks um, for not being able to return it in that original box. So do not discard your box. I'm going to probably keep this for at least a week or two, just kind of make sure I don't have any major issues with the bike and that I want to do a return. So that's the first thing. But as far as what's coming out of the box, we literally just have the two uh, wheels. We have the whole assembly of kind of the main frame of the bike. And uh, this is going to be probably pedals, some smaller parts. And then we literally have a seat and that's it. So it's like four or five pieces that come out of here. Now you will want to do a few things. Uh, this, this is actually a dropper post that, that came on this bike. Um, but like, you know, they come with reflectors. So I'm going to remove this. Um, this actually comes with the WTB seat. But again, I've, I've got that red one I'm going to place on there. So I'll do some smaller sub assembly changes. I'll get this all changed out before we put it onto the bike. Um, but yeah, it should be pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna pop out the instructions, start kind of having a look, and then just start pulling off a lot of the stuff, get it on my frame stand, and we'll start putting it together.
All right, so at this point, I've got most of this stuff all off the bike, and now I've just got to go ahead and, uh, well, I've got to remove this uh, little piece here they have for a reflector, which obviously we won't use, and then we can just simply uh, go ahead and pop in the handlebars into the stem. Um, we're going to have to obviously get the, uh, the wheel put in, bolt on the caliper, the brake caliper. Uh, I think also, I know one of these, oh, I guess they both have the rotor. Yeah, so we've got to bolt the rotors on. Um, get the calipers on, put the wheels on, attach the chain. Um, the only other thing I see that I've never really done before is we've just got to, uh, they also give us the little ends here, but we're gonna have to hook this up for the dropper post. Um, so yeah, we'll get that going, pedals. Otherwise, it, I mean, it looks like hopefully it's not gonna be too bad. I'm in love with the color. Um, I wasn't sure if it'd be like kind of a light silver, dark silver. It looked light on the website, luckily, it was so really happy about that because I'm kind of going for I wanted white so I could have like kind of red and white but this light silver and in, uh, in the red will look fine too uh, so, so a little bit of specs on the bike so I ordered this one it comes in two flavors you can get either a 29er I think it's 29 by 2.35 tires that it comes with or you could get uh, 27 and a half comes with 2.6 now this bike will accept up to three inch wide tires with the 27 and a half. I'm not sure how wide I could go with 29er, but uh, my kind of plan was to use the 29er wheel set all summer. And then maybe if I want to get in a couple uh, snow rides, cause I am going to sell my fat tire bike. I don't want to have, you know, a million bikes. So uh, I'm going to order a set of 27 and a half wheels by three with some tires. And uh, you know, I only get to do maybe two or three snow rides a year anyway. And so I figured that would be cool. And then I could kind of swap between kind of have like semi fat tires and all that good stuff. So the bike does come with a SRAM Eagle one by 12 drivetrain. Uh, you can see it's just got some kind of lower spec uh, Sun Tour uh, shocks. I mean, still probably more, you know, spikes kind of way above my skill level. I've only been riding for a couple of years, but Name brand stuff. So that's the cool part, guys. If you haven't heard of Bikes Direct, the reason why I still keep ordering bikes from these guys is, okay, the frame is a gravity frame, right? You've never heard of gravity, fine. But it's all the same, you know, basically they're copying your specialized, your all your high-end bike designs. All the stuff's made out of Asia anyway in the, in the factories there. Um, so, you know, it's got hidden cables. I mean, I didn't weigh this thing yet. I'll weigh it fully assembled. But when I just picked the frame up, this whole section i mean it was really really light so pretty pretty impressed so far but otherwise besides the frame all the components are name brand stuff like i think this one has uh, actual shimano hydraulic disc brakes um, now this shock is some kind of this is some kind of weird off-brand deal but if you get some of their higher end bikes you know they all come with rock shocks or fox shocks you know all name brand stuff right um, so i think the tires i've got what maxis tires um, are these wtb rims I don't know. I'm not a huge bike guy. I don't know all the stuff, but I'm, I'm learning, guys. But uh, anyway, for 1500 bucks, this is, you know, when I looked, I mean, this would be a, a $2,500, $3,000 bike in like a Specialized, and really you're just paying for that name. You are paying for also uh, to be able to service the bike. Like when I take this bike in, my local bike shop's not going to give me priority because for one, I didn't buy the bike from them, which seems to be what they're all doing locally here in Michigan now because uh, they're so slammed, you know, due to COVID and everyone out riding. But, um, you know, and also I've never had an issue with parts. I mean, all the, like I said, all this stuff is using usually name brand parts. So if you need to get a new cassette, you know, it's just a Vanessa Ram cassette or Shimano or whatever. It's not weird, you know, Chinese off brand stuff. It's usually good stuff. So really, really impressed so far. So anyway, let's keep going. I'm going to uh, kind of start to get the handlebars on and maybe start put the wheels on and we'll kind of see if we run into any snags. I'll let you guys know. So one kind of cool thing I'm getting into uh, installing the rotor. So I've only ever had, you know, bikes with bolt on rotors, you know, you got whatever, six bolts, but this one actually looks like uh, it just kind of pops over the edge of the wheel here. So the wheels kind of got this little spline section and it uh, looks like this is also a spline that slides on and then there's just kind of a cap uh, that uh, this kind of cap that's threaded and then you just kind of simply thread that on there. Um, I do have the special tool to tighten this too. So that's, I'm glad I bought that all. I'll put links for all this stuff down below. I ended up over the last couple of years buying, you know, a little bit of bike tools just cause I, I do most of my own service. 
tune-ups when I have to uh, actually tune up like, you know, derailers. I don't know. I tried. I can't really do that. So I still send that out. But anything else where I'm replacing, you know, handlebars or most other service, I just do it myself. So I'll put some links down below. A lot of the stuff for bikes is surprisingly cheap, cheap for tools, cheap for parts. I mean, super cheap, like blow your mind, you know, like you look at this rotor and you're like, oh, this is looks expensive. It's probably like 15 bucks. I mean, it's literally so cheap. So most of the stuff I get on Amazon. I got this bike stand on Amazon, but yeah, I'll put the links down below if you're interested. But uh, yeah, this looks pretty easy. So let's get this bolted up. Then I think we can slide the wheel in place, put the axle through, and then hopefully just bolt on the, uh, the rotor or the uh, caliper. And hopefully the front will be done. We'll see. I don't know. All right, so I thought that I had the tool that was needed, uh, which is basically a socket to go around the outside uh, diameter here and be able to tighten this. So, uh, turns out I do not. So, no problem, I ordered it on Amazon. It was like $15, um, but this is uh, called the center lock rotor. So, if you just kind of search for that, center lock rotor, uh, so I ended up getting a socket. I saw there was like some kind of wrenches too. Um, but I just got a, a socket that way I can just be able to tighten this, get it on and off. You know, now that I have it, I'm going to need the tool to service it. So yeah, 15 bucks, that'll be here tomorrow. Um, I'll be gone tomorrow. So I'll have to kind of make an update when I get back. But anyway, so, um, yeah, so we'll just kind of leave that, you know, hand tight for now. And then, uh, we'll have to tighten that up later on. So putting this wheel on, it was just as simple as bringing it up and then sliding the axle through and just tightening it. Um, eight to 10 Newton meters is what it says right on there. And uh, as, as far as putting this uh, caliper on, again, it uh, looks simple, but just uh, see this kind of red plastic. This is just to keep the uh, caliper or the um, brake pads from going together. So pull that out before you install. And then it's just literally these two bolts and it just goes right uh, into here. So you'll kind of slide that whole thing over, tighten it down really easy. All right, so front wheel is taken care of. Uh, all this stuff's bolted on. So again, it was really easy, just bolt those guys in. Uh, we'll have to come back later, tighten up that other part, take the wheel back off, but uh, good enough for now, just so we can get it all together and at least you know take it for some rides down the driveway here. Now on the back, um, I've got all this crap off, all the wrapping stuff. So to put on the rear derailleur, it's just gonna be this one bolt here. Uh, once you pull the bag off, you know, it's already got the bolt, all that good stuff. You're just gonna pop it up uh, right here, tighten it up. Rear wheel was the same as the front as far as the rotor goes. So same thing, I'm gonna have to eventually, uh, once I get my socket, tighten this up. And yeah, we're just gonna put it on in. Now the rear does have a through axle with a quick release. so. Same, same as the front though, you just you know unscrew this thing, pop out the axle, we're gonna slide the wheel up, we'll get this bolted on first, uh, get the derailleur bolted on, slide the wheel up, put the chain on, and then probably do pedals. And uh, what else we got? Probably swap that seat out onto there, and then we'll have to work on getting the um, dropper cable hooked up, which I've never done before. So then at least we can put it on the ground, start messing with that, and uh, yeah, I mean, other than obviously adjusting handlebar stuff like that, that's going to be it. So pretty simple. I'm just, you know, it's freaking beautiful out here. I'm just going really slow, taking my time. A lot of the stuff's new to me. So, um, you know, uh, I mean, if I can do it, most of you guys can do it too, right? If you just, if you know what you're doing in the garage, you got some tools. So especially, you know, if you work on cars and stuff like that. I mean, bikes are relatively simple. So don't be afraid of it. Give it a shot. And remember, if you know, if whatever, you screw it up or you get stumped or something, then you can always take it to your local mechanic, uh, bike mechanic, have them fix it for you, um, you know, but at least this way probably would have cost me at least a hundred bucks or so to uh, get it uh, put together, you know, maybe even more because they would have probably charged me a hundred to assemble it plus then also the, the tune-up part. So 
at least I've got it assembled. And then if I find out, oh, it's, it kind of shifts weird or there's any issues and I need to take it there, then, you know, maybe it's only 50 bucks just to have them do the uh, tune-up portion. All right, so uh, I've got this bike so high up, it's a little bit of a struggle to kind of get this all together, but um, went together pretty easily. So we've got the axle uh, all through, all tightened. Um, it was, again, pretty simple process. So got it all up. I think now we can move on to the pedals, but uh, we should have, yeah, we got some, we got some spinach. So pretty easy. This is my first one by that I've ever had. I think uh, my fat tire bike's a three by nine. My old full suspension was like a three by eight. And I did convert it to a one by eight, but um, you know, just not enough gear sometimes, right? So super stoked to have a one by 12. It's gonna be freaking awesome. Um, so yeah, all right, let's throw pedals on and what's left? Ah, then the hardest part's gonna be probably that, uh, that seat. So we'll do pedals, I'll get the bike down and then we'll start on the seat. So for pedals, I kind of went with a similar style pedal that I've been running for years. Um, they make them in a lot of different brands. I always buy them on Amazon. Um, and I never spend a lot of money. And uh, usually I'll get like a Rock Bros brand, which are like maybe 25 bucks. Um, these ones I found were like an Amazon choice or whatever. And they were only uh, like $15. I think there was some kind of sale. But they basically look just like the Rock Bros that I have on my fat tire bike. I mean, down to the color not being, you know, quite red. Like, I would like it to be more of a red, but basically the same same design, same all that stuff. Um, I don't know. I've never ran, uh, like, clip-in pedals before. I always just run these. Uh, mostly just because sometimes I bike, you know, I might get out of the gym, I go bike, whatever. And so I'm always worried if I had clip-ins, I'd have to make sure I have those special shoes and all that kind of stuff. And sometimes... Uh, you know, I may bike, then I may go for a run. I don't know. So for me, it's just flat pedals are better. I ride the bikes a lot with the kids, um, even at home. So I'm not going to switch out pedals just to ride with the kids. And it just doesn't make, I, I don't really see the difference. Maybe uh, if I ever do another race or something, maybe I'll, sw I'll swap them out. But uh, anyway, so yeah, these are real straightforward. Let's screw these in and then move on. All right, so I thought maybe we'd have to like make some adjustments and stuff on this, but um, ah, okay, so actually I see. So there is like a little Allen wrench on here where you can actually move this and tighten it. So we might have to make some adjustments, I guess, but for the initial trial, it looks like really all we gotta do is just kinda take that and um, you know put the cable through here and then it ultimately just will insert and set in there and it goes up and down and then it says the instructions, just make sure, you know, it, it's at least into this portion, uh, inset, you know, into there for safety. So it's at least gotta be like this, if not more. So this is a large frame, um, which I think is for like six foot to six foot two. I'm like barely six foot, like five eleven and a half. So bike will probably be a little bit big, so I could probably hopefully lower it down, but uh, yeah, we'll see. All right, let's try to try to bolt it up.
All right, guys, for this dropper, there's actually no real instructions unless I'm missing it somewhere else in here. But the KS instructions basically just tell you how to tighten the freaking bolt clamp, which, okay, everyone knows that, and then some other stuff. But they don't really tell you, like, step by step. So as it comes, all you've got to do is get your dropper post. And this took me a, you know, a minute to figure out. But um, basically just slide this cable up through the bottom here. And then what you want to do next is actually insert... Um, this metal piece here the little cylinder part like go ahead and loosen it um you know pull the cable out from it slide this through first and then you have to kind of hold that in place and then slide the cable up through the bottom and then um, i had to use a little hook tool because it kind of gets stuck right here the cable you know it doesn't want to make the 90 right there so i use a little hook tool to pull it out and then once you pull it out just pull it tight and then tighten both uh tighten tighten uh you know this little screw in here onto the thing um, you could probably cut this shorter. I just said, you know what, I'm going to leave it how it is. And then it comes with this little um, little end here, you know, just to keep it from fraying. But there's plenty of room down there for, for the cable and all that stuff, you know, for this excess, just in case I ever have to make any adjustments. Um, but I did test it out. It does work. So, uh, yeah, now I've just got to drop it in. And then I'm probably going to go wash my hands, and then I'll try to put on the, uh, the red seat. And then we can start getting the bike on the ground, make some final adjustments for handlebars. All right, so we've gotten this far now. <clears throat> I had the bike on the ground. I got the seat swapped out and got the handlebars in position. Now, the only thing really left here is to uh, just swap out. Uh, I bought some red um, lock-on grips, full lock-on grips. Now, what's interesting is in Bikes Direct, uh, the reason kind of they were saying that this bike was kind of on sale or whatever was that it just had a plain saddle and it didn't have lock-on grips, but it does have lock-ons. Now, they're not lock-ons where both sides lock on so maybe that's what they meant this is kind of a cheaper one but these are actually really nice like really soft um really soft rubber material so i'll take those hang on to them you know for my kids bikes or another bike but uh we'll get these on it also said it didn't come with like the premium saddle but um this you know came with a wtb seat so usually these are nice so uh nice and lightweight too so again throw that with my parts and be cool for uh, for some other bike or whatever but yeah let's get that on and then we'll uh, air the tires up and we can go see if it shifts and all that good stuff we'll give it a shot All right, guys, so I threw some air in the tires, and uh, actually, I guess one thing to mention, these come with the uh, Presta valves. So I actually always put an adapter uh, on the Presta valves that just goes to like a regular um, weighted air tire or whatever. Um, I just find that when I'm out there, like uh, my local metro parks, uh, the stuff that they have to air them up doesn't work for a Presta valve, works for just a regular one. Um, plus, you know, I like to just be able to go back and forth between all the bikes and not have to put on the stupid Presta adapter. So I keep it like that. That's how I roll. It works great. And uh, the final touch we're going to put on, I got a couple fenders that I picked out. Uh, my kids actually helped me pick them out. So kind of red, white, and blue, tie it all in. So we'll get these thrown on front and back and then uh, we should be able to take it for a quick rip.
All right, guys, so that's it for this build. It went pretty, pretty simple. Um, I would say the only thing I wasn't super sure about was, you know, initially how to get this uh, um, drop post put on, but that went just fine, pretty quick. Um, so now it's obviously probably gonna need some fine tuning. I may wanna uh, either cut down the handlebars, make them narrower, or change how some of the uh, uh, brakes and shifters are. But otherwise, let's kind of take it for a quick rip down the driveway. Uh, like we said earlier, right, we cannot uh, take it on the trail yet until we get that socket tool to be able to tighten these uh, rotors. But at least we can just go take it and just see uh, kind of first impression. So let me do that right now and then I'll let you guys know what I think. All right, so we started going down the driveway, seemed like it was shifting all right for a second, and then boom, I started hearing something hitting the uh, spokes of the rear wheel, and it's the uh, bottom of the derailleur here. So, All right, guys, so we figured it out. It's the uh, this derailleur hanger right here, which uh, came from the factory. You can see where it's not tucked against um, you know, this side right here. It should be straight. So I don't know how well it picks it up, but it should be straight, and it's not. It's angled inwards, and so that's why we're now hitting the... Um, we're hitting the wheel. So what I'm going to try to do, I can order another one, which is no big deal. Um, I'm going to be gone the next four or five days, but I think for right now, I'm literally just going to take it and I'm just going to try to bend it uh, back straight. And, um, and then I'll probably order another one too. I'm guessing it's a pretty inexpensive part, but just so I can kind of ride it, get through the gears and all that good stuff, but must've just got bent in uh, shipping. All right. So honestly, that wasn't uh, very hard. So I literally just kind of gorilla handled it and it's, pretty dang straight now all right so let's give it another shot see if we can ride it all right guys so so far so good uh the bike seems seems to shift uh, through the gears just fine and uh, yeah I'm gonna have to play with it play with the lockout and stuff but uh, I was also worried about the fit so like I said I'm just under six foot and this uh, 19 inch frame fits me just fine I was worried about the reach uh, maybe being too far but it feels really really good uh, the ergonomics of it feels very upright really nice so really really stoked uh, I do have to make some adjustments to the seat raise it up probably another inch or so um, doesn't have a quick release, which I probably will swap it out for a quick release um, just in case we want to make adjustments or let someone else ride my bike. I hate having to go get a tool to be able to do that. Um, but uh... Alright guys, so the one final thing I wanted to check on this bike is the weight. So Bikes Direct does a pretty terrible job with most all of their bikes with not publishing a weight which if you're looking for bikes, that's really one of the big things you're comparing is weight, right? So uh, I've got my little scale here, so let's kind of see if we can uh, lift it up, weigh this thing and see what we got. Got to get it to not touch me though. Okay, so that was 37.6. Let's try it again. Cause that ain't, uh, she ain't too light, huh? Zero it out. Still can't get it not to touch me with the stupid handlebars. 37.6, so definitely not light. 37.6, you know what? I'm gonna have to go and weigh my fat tire bike because I'm kind of curious the difference. Yeah, let's try the fatty, double check the fatty. All right, so I just actually went and weighed my fat tire bike. That thing was like 35.7. So this bike's literally a little bit heavier than a fat tire bike, but I guess, of course, we do have dual uh, suspension, even though we do have uh, much smaller uh, wheels. So yeah, pretty pretty heavy bike. Actually, a lot heavier than I would have thought. Um, dang. Well, we'll have to see how it is on the trail, see if we start hitting some PRs with it. So we'll see. Otherwise, yeah, we'll probably do another video after I can actually uh, get to the trails and stuff. But for now, at least we've uh, got some uh, the building of it and all that good stuff. And, and like I said, uh, it took me 30 seconds to fix that derailleur uh, hanger and just simply pull it. So it went through all 12 gears just fine. So I'll probably order another one, but all seems good. 
And uh, yeah, I think again for 1500 bucks, you guys, uh, if you look around right now for bikes, that's probably one of the best deals out there for the combination of hydraulics, uh, lightweight, aluminum, um, one by 12 drivetrain, all that good stuff. So it's pretty awesome. So anyway, hopefully this video uh, helps you out, guys. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Check out Amazon.com slash for lifting gear and also SwoleDaddyDetroit.com. We'll catch you guys on the next one.